underneath the bellied skies where dust and rain find space to fall, to fall and lie and change again without a care or mind at all for art and life and things above. In that there look just there, no right, left, up, down, past or future we have but ourselves to fear. Hugh, you chose that poem. Um, <laughs> for God's sake, why? <laughs> I chose it for a number of reasons, Stephen. Chief amongst them being? Well, uh, <laughs> can I perhaps turn that question round and say, because it was short? The poem? <laughs> yes. And that's important? Well, yes, it seems to me, with, with the pace of modern life being what it is, most people just haven't got time to spend on long poems, and, and therefore this is something that would ideally suit uh, the short-haul commuter or the busy housewife, uh, and leave plenty of time over for other sporting and leisure activities. Well, that uh, represents quite a boon. Oh, an enormous boon. Well, we're always on the lookout for enormous boons. <laughs> Is it, uh, is it perfectly safe? Oh, it's absolutely safe, yes. This is a poem you could leave around the house in absolute confidence. Mm -hmm. Presumably, though, there must be shorter poems than that. Oh, good heavens, yes. Good heavens, yes. Good heavens, yes. Oh. Uh, there's a poem by Richard Maddox called Institutions, which I can read for you, if you like. Please. Right. <clears throat> Le. <laughs> that is short. It's very short, yes. <laughs> Too short, perhaps? Possibly. Um, nonetheless, it might suit, say, the very busy senior executive who's only got a few moments to snatch between meetings and so on. Well, that, of course, is the market that Maddox was aiming for. Right. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> right about this time, a lot of people are starting to think about going on summer holidays. Um, do you have any, any advice uh, as to the kind of poems that might be suitable, say, for a family about to embark on a budget bargain break weekend fortnight getaway day now? <laughs> <laughs> well... Yeah, can, can I first of all issue a warning to any family planning uh, to take poetry on holiday with them? And that warning is? Be careful. Well, that sounds like <laughs> uh, Check with your travel agent to see if there are any specific customs regulations regarding poetry, and if you're travelling outside the EEC, wrap up warm. Right. <laughs> um, do you have any particular advice on how to carry poetry abroad? Ah, yes. Now, I would say it's definitely worth investing in a proper travelling poetry bag. A travelling poetry bag? A travelling poetry bag, yes. You can get one of these at most big high street travelling poetry bag shops. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, I believe you've got one more poem that you're going to read to us before you go away from here. That's right. <laughs> this is called uh, The Rest of My Life, and it's by T.P. Mitchell. The T.P. Mitchell? No, a uh, T.P. Mitchell. <laughs> Uh, this is quite solid, uh, but not without being too heavy. I think it's quite stylish. It's quite reader-friendly. All right. <laughs> so that might suit, say, a young couple just about to start out in the catering business in the North Wales area. <laughs> Forward and back, said the old man in the dance as he whittled away at his stick. Long gone, long gone, without a glance, to the entrance made of brick. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> uh... I don't think anyone here can fail to be alarmed by what's happening to our young people. I'm thinking here of crime, of drug addiction, of easy sex, of all the vices that can destroy a young person's life. And I believe we must look to the schools to tackle this problem. Schools must help youngsters to develop a sense of decent, civilized behavior. Because everyone must surely agree that decent, civilized behavior is every bit as important as being able to subtract or, or take away. <laughs> Basically, the plain and simple purpose of education must be to teach children, young people, not, I repeat, not to break into my car. <laughs> there will be other aspects to education, I'm sure, but the most fundamental principle of decent, civilized behavior is don't break into my car. <laughs> of course, I am concerned that young people shouldn't break into other people's cars too. But I think that's more of an ethical question and not really the province of government. <laughs> the most important thing is that they don't break into my car. And of course, we must look to the courts to sanction this principle. Community service such a favourite with magistrates in recent years, shouldn't be a matter of simply scrubbing graffiti off a few lavatory walls. Young offenders must expect a short, sharp lesson in replacing the near side window of my car. <laughs> because leaving my bloody car alone is what this government means by decent, civilised behaviour. Well, it only takes about ten minutes, apparently, and when you come out, you look exactly like Keith Harris.